question the person asked. I got married two weeks ago and I have been in agony since I walked down the aisle. On our wedding night, my husband washed his feet into a bowl and told me to drink the water, saying it is a sign of respect and submission and it's a tradition from his state and every married woman needs to do this too. Needs to do this every month, every month. I refused to drink it and laughed it off. He was very angry with me and we both slept angry and I cried so hard like I've never done in my entire life. Next day, he washed his feet again, told me to drink the water I refused and the next words out of his mouth was that he wanted divorce. If I refuse to perform the rituals, please, I need your opinion. This is all too strange for me. Has anyone gone through a dilemma like this? What do you do? What would you do in my position? Is this normal? All in the name of marriage, blah, 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 blah. And like I said, I don't know if it's a village tradition in any village. I'm not aware of that, but it just doesn't sound normal. Why would you wash your feet and expect your wife to drink the water from your dirty feet? Yeah, it just doesn't sound normal to me. It sounds a bit fetish, sounds a bit occultic and all that, you know. But like I, like I said, I'm sure while they were cutting, there must have been a red flag here and a red flag there. But at times, everybody's caught up in the euphoria of love that they did not pay close attention to it. You know, so... If you have anything to say about that, you do. But if you have any other question, any other question in any other area, you ask. We have limited time. You can send it, like I said earlier, you can send like a message if you want anonymity. Send like a message. Okay, I've seen some of the some of your questions. If you want to know if um, it's okay to go ahead and marry someone knowing fully well his parents don't like you. Is you okay to marry someone knowing fully well that his parents don't like you? <sighs> that's it. That's that. It's a bit tricky to say the least. It's a bit tricky. You know, it is said that when you marry, especially for a lady, you just don't. You just don't marry the man. You marry his entire family. You know? And there's wisdom in that. But on the flip side, when you're so married, you're not going to live with everyone. You're just going to live with your husband. But what I would say, it, it really boils down to the man. What kind of man is is he a man that um, that is a man of his own or does he still have a leash around his neck from the home that's from his father or from his mother so it actually depends on the man it depends on the man so these are some of the things I will, we are talking about you know those red flags so you need to find out while you're cutting, if the man is a man, he takes his own decision, he's a man of his own, he does what he wants, he's in control of his life, his destiny and everything. Then if he's that kind of man, then I believe you can go ahead and marry that man. But if he's a man that has a collar around his neck and a leash from his parents, meaning his parents are the ones that control him, that director. I don't know if you've ever seen somebody walking a dog, you know, and usually the dog has a leash, a collar and a leash around his neck. In case the dog wants to go astray, the owner will pull him back. So that means the owner is at the driver's seat. So a lot of men are also like that. They have somebody that controls them. So if the controlling point of that man are his parents 
then I think you should have a rethink. Also, depending on the kind of personality you have. If you have the kind of personality, now nah, no problem. If mommy, that is, if mother in law, father in law wants to control our home, I don't mind. I don't have a problem with that. It's fine. Then you go ahead and marry him. But if, if that definitely is not in your in your in your in your personality, you just can't take it. Then I would advise you to opt out. To opt out. That would be my advice. Like the video I played, you know, they noted some red flags, relationship red flags. Things if you see uh, while you are being friends with somebody or while you are cutting the person. And they're like, mm, you, know, you need to look at it again. The first one is how they talk about their ex. You know, some people talk about their ex like they're the gods or a god to them. They're constantly referring to their ex. They're constantly referring to their ex. I mean, it's worse when, when they try to compare you with their ex that is a no no that is a, a red red in fact beyond red flag that's red card you should turn that red flag to a red card you should give the guy a red card and give the girl a red card when you are constantly being compared to their ex it's a no no then another thing another red flag that was um, raised in that video is when they show jealousy Jealousy, you know, jealousy is uh, is a strong emotion and it's very, very dangerous. You know, jealousy leads to obsession. You know, lust also leads to obsession. You know, that's another, another topic for another day. But see, jealousy is a strong emotion. Jealousy can lead it, get it to a point where it can even kill. It's that dangerous. It can even kill. So once uh, you notice that, that that other person is always jealous, always jealous, that is a red flag. Now, there is a balance. Does that mean uh, the person should not have any, you know, kind of jealousy? The person should not feel somehow when you are talking to another person, when you are hanging out with another person. No, there's usually maybe we are human. There's usually this, you know, feeling on the inside when you see somebody you like, you love, paying so much attention to somebody else other than you. Yeah, you have this thing on your inside. It could, it could be, it could be. Ah, uh, I wish he could, he, he could spend more time with me. It could be the the feeling that you want that person more, or it could be, oh, who is this person? You know. That one is okay, but jealousy is an extreme emotion. I mean, jealousy, it can even make you sick. Jealousy can even cause you to have stomach upset. Yeah, just like envy too. Oh, envy is dangerous. You know, envy is, is driven by an evil spirit. So you need to be careful about it too. So. Does that mean if somebody is in a relationship with you, that person does not have the right to talk with somebody else or, you know, have friends and all that? No, no. Actually, how, uh, a true test of that relationship is, even, is when you let the person have a sense of freedom that she can do anything, that he can do anything he wants or she wants. And you, you stay back and watch. How will that person use that freedom? Will he go overboard? Will he get overly friendly and all that? It also gives you an opportunity to see a red flag there or not. You know, it's better you let the bed loose than you cage the bed. I mean, there's a limit to which you can cage a bed. And you can cage a bed for a while. You can cage a a man. You can... you can cage a man. I mean, you cannot even cage a man. But a man can pretend to be caged. But can be doing a whole lot of stuff behind you that you don't even know of. So, excessive jealousy is not good. That's my point. It's not good at all. Um, 
is even a turn off for some people. When you get excessively jealous, I mean they're turned off. <laughs> they 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 cease liking you or stop liking you, start liking another person because nobody wants to be, you know, stalked. It's like you're hounding him or her. Nobody wants that. True love will thrive with a sense of freedom. You know, when you love somebody, you truly love somebody, no matter the freedom you have, you are still faithful to that person. So you also test your love by giving that person some some room. Once in a while, or more often than not. Jealousy is not good. It's a red flag, a red flag. Especially when it's coming from, you know what I mean? It's not even good either way, whether it's from the man or from the woman. It's never good. You know, just that when it's coming from the man, it could it could be it could now graduate into violence, you know, into physical abuse. So once you see a man that is overly jealous, that is a big red flag. That is a man that can physically abuse you in that relationship. So it's a red flag. You need to back out of it as soon as possible, as soon as you can, as soon as you can. My girl wants to come back to me after one year plus. Bob, can you give us more information? If it is if it is private, just send me a message so I will understand exactly the details and have a little background of what's going on. That will help me give you a better answer. But if you've broken up with somebody and the person wants to come back to you, and in this case a girl, as the man, you need to ask yourself a lot of questions. What, what is it that she's coming back to? What is driving her away from where she ran to? That she's coming back to you. What she left to go and get, or whom she left to go and get? Did she get the person? Did the person also, the, the person also boot, give her the boots, and now she's now coming back to you. So you need to find out: Are you? A fallback option are you option B or option C or option D she has gone for her option A maybe didn't work out now she's coming back hoping that you take her back so these are some of the things you need to query and find out but from my little experience in relationships and cancelling people I can bet you that it didn't work out for her out there that's why she's coming back to you so the question is do you want to be her vomit you know there's this saying about returning to your vomit it, it, the dog returning back to his vomit so would you want to be that do you want i mean i, I would rather you be a first choice than a second choice or rather you be in the first 11 than on the substitute bench and when it comes to relationships don't 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 play second fiddle. Don't 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 do that. Don't ever do that. Actually, if, if you have marriage at the back of your mind, which of course you should have, don't play second fiddle to anything or to anybody. It's not worth it in the long run. If you weren't her first choice, then good riddance to her. Good riddance. And another thing, please don't take her back to show her or punish her. You know, another thing men do is that okay, they'll take her back and do something, use her, or do something to her to pay her back. No, don't do that. It's not, we don't do that. We don't believe in that. Just tell her, oh, hello, thank you, and goodbye. And move on. One year plus is a long time. Like they say, water has gone, a lot of water has gone under the bridge. Move on. All right? Um, Bob, you've sent it. Okay, Bob, I'll go to look. I'm going to look for your message later, and we'll chat. Okay. Um, I have another question here. What do you do when you're in a relationship, but the person hardly communicates with you? Hardly communicates with you. Very easy. Um, communication is like the lubricant to a relationship one makes the engine of that relationship run smoothly is good communication effective communication 
you know so once communication is not there there is no relationship that's the truth yeah you remember when i was cutting my wife we were in two different cities but she will tell you tales of how she will go to nightel i'll tell you tales of how i'll go to nightel queue up buy those cards that are in a card like this atm card nightel card i think 100 200 naira denomination i think they have 500 or so you buy the card and you have to queue up for your turn so they have like phone booth they have different booths at the nightel call center you queue up for your turn will call i can tell you the number of times i had to tap the phone at home because it's usually locked by you but the way we tap it we'll call call you know and we are constantly communicating we are constantly talking you know even when there's nothing to say we listen to ourselves breathing you know, without communication there is no relationship that is the truth one of the ways your souls will be knit together is through communication because when you keep and keep talking to each other you are sharing your soul with each other jesus said the words i speak unto you their spirit and their life you share your soul you share your life you know one of the ways people also get so tired is through communication and that is the truth you know you can even fall in love with somebody you've not seen or met but you guys talk always yeah it's possible very very possible so in a relationship there is no communication take it from me there is no relationship so don't be deceived all right um now the questions are coming thick and fast um i have one of my friends come to me about her spouse he is one of the jealous ones and it's really over the top <laughs> every little thing sets him off and she's getting fed up with the whole thing i really don't know what to tell her spouse i believe these guys are they are married already or are they or are they cutting if they are married they are stuck the only way you can help them is through the man's mentor is to find out who the man listens to who does the man listen to so it's that man that can sit him down and speak to him about it and hopefully he will hear his mentor and change then if they are not married of course this is a red flag what we are talking about is a red flag so the woman should know what is coming and choose whether to marry or not to marry but it's a big red flag it's a big red 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 flag you know i know men that call their wives every second where are you uh, i'm just in the office um i'm just uh, I'm about leaving and all that okay you will drop let's say come where are you i'm just running off i'm clearing my table i'll soon leave yeah. let's see you go oh nina i'm, I'm just i just left I'm, I'm in the car he said uh, which car he said i'm in the in a colleague's car he's, he's going to drop me who's the colleague you know him now he's this he's poor hmm. poor every day poor hmm. oh, okay oh. just be talking uh, and he'll start talking no nothing no nothing serious just he wants to be on the phone as long as she will be in that car to make sure that nothing else happens you know they just be there, just be there talking say, they just be talking eh. you know doesn't make sense one of the you know foundation of a good marriage is trust once there is no trust decay will start entering that relationship so it should be trust because once there is trust there is um there won't be jealousy that is the truth that is the truth i was in the salon when a man came shouting that the hairstylist spoke to his girlfriend and the man wanted to fight 
So, yeah, a jealous man should be avoided. Okay, yeah, that's true. When you are in a relationship and you find out you earn more than a man, how do you handle this? Good question. Good question. Okay, well, already, I'm married already, exactly. So, they should get a mentor. That is the only way that can be helped. They should get a mentor. Okay, when a woman earns more than the man, what should the woman, what should the girl do? Okay, in the relationship, they're not married yet. Especially when he tends to monitor the person's every movement. Um, is he monitoring your movement or is monitoring your salary when it is paid, when it is not paid, how much you have in your account and all that. Okay, these are the things, like you said in a relationship, that means you're not married yet. So these are the things that should be discussed at the point of uh, engagement. Engagement. You know, not courtship. If you've gone through my masterclass on relationships and I advise you to do that, go to my YouTube channel and go to the playlist uh, masterclass on relationship. I have, I think I have about 16 classes there. Actually, when I talked about uh, compatibility, Sorry, when I talked about the different uh, the cycle of marriage, friendship, courtship, engagement, and marriage. So you understand what I mean by engagement. At the engagement point, you guys should sit down and talk about finances. Very important. You know, the leading cause of marital breakup is finances. That is the truth. The leading cause of marital breakup is finances. Recent statistics has it that Christian marriages are breaking up three times faster than non-Christian marriages. I'll say that again. Christian, Christians are getting divorced three times more than unbelievers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The recent statistics. So, church marriages are breaking up faster than unbelieving marriages. You better believe it. But that's what's going on. And when you look critically into what is causing the trouble usually more often than not finances they say seven out of ten uh it has to do with money so at the point of engagement money should be talked about oh yes it is not something it's not a topic that should be swept swept under the rug never do that it should be discussed it should be discussed everybody's card must be on the table Hey, how much do you earn? I earn this, I earn that, I earn that. Everybody will talk about it. So how are we going to run this family finance? You talk about it. You talk about budget. I have a course on that too, about family finances, budget and all that. You draw up the budget. This is what we are going to do. This is what I want to do, blah, blah, blah. So at the point of all this discussion, the man will now find out that you are earning more than him then you need to read his body language. Very important. How is he taking it? Is there an issue for him? What kind of comments is he making? Now there's, a, there's, 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 there's a group of men that is arising and they're arising thick and fast. These are men that don't want to do anything. They just want to sit down for their woman to do all the work, make all the money, take care of him and, and his children. And he will not contribute anything to the house. So, for the woman, you need to be so, 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 so. Rather, you don't need to be oblivious of this. This is what is happening now. So, you read the man's body language and listen intently what he says, actually, when it comes to finances. Is he saying things like, because I've heard a lot of things sitting on the couch in the castle? She's on the counseling couch. Is he saying things like, okay, um, that he's thinking that he will resign from his job when you guys get married so he can do this or he can do that, that you can continue working and all that. Once you start hearing things like that, they are red flags. They are serious red flags. Or he's saying, um, okay. Uh, we'll, I have to control your account or you, you have to pay. I've had this, I, have, I had a headache case where the man told the woman that she needs to pay all the money to his account 
and from there he will now that's the money she earns that they pay her salary she will transfer her salary into his account then he will now give her a little percentage to run the home uh, there's nothing really wrong with that but personally i'm not comfortable with that i'm not why should the man control the woman's salary when she's the one doing the work I'm not saying women should not contribute to the run of the household. That's what, that's what I'm saying. They should actually. But taking that away from her, it's not the best. You should give your wife some little room. If what's little, you should give your wife a lot of room. In fact, when I teach family finances, I really advocate that the woman should be the one running, managing, handling, the finances of the home. That's what I advocate. That's what I advocate. Why? Because women naturally have managerial skills that most men don't. Yeah, there are, there are some men that have it, but most men don't. So I advocate, I advocate that women run the family finances. Or better still, have a joint account. An account where the two of you must sign. Where the two of you must sign. You know, and have some other tenants that you guys will build your 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 relationship on. Anyway, that is not your question. Your question is your question is um, how do you handle this? There's no problem with that, except the man has a problem with it. That you earn more than the man. To me, there's no problem with that. But if the man has a problem with that, how would you know? Read his body language. When he finds out. Is there any, was there any change or would there be any change in his behavior? Then read the body language. Then if there's a change in his behavior for the worse, then that is a red flag. Then you decide whether you should turn the red flag to a red card. But the upper week we're going to have continue our Q&A. But send me your questions ahead of time or you prepare them. Once I get online, you send your questions so we can tackle them. I'm really, 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 really glad and happy that you guys joined me today. I'm really glad. Thanks for joining me. I really always, always look forward to having you. So please make it a date with me next Friday. If you don't follow me on Facebook, please just do that before you cut off. Just go up, click on follow and follow me. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is youtube.com slash C slash Saint Vlog Saint V L O G Saint Vlog and subscribe then get to my my website my blog ww saint dot tips t i p s and go to the next level there's a, a page called next level click on it and I'll love your name and your email you subscribe so you can get everything I write all my videos sent to your box. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Please remember to subscribe to his YouTube channel at Saint Vlog. Follow him on Facebook at Chukudum. Follow him on Twitter at Chukudum O. Follow him on Instagram at Saint T. Subscribe on his blog www.saint.tips with an S to receive the daily devotional and bullet words sent to your email daily.